and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we're going to be looking at the passive activity loss limits. Now, this session implies that you already know the at-risk limits, which I already covered, and I already covered what constitute material participation. So here, we're going to assuming in this lecture that we assume we know what material participation is. We're going to, when I mention this term, I'm going to assume you know what it is. If you don't know what it is, if you don't know what at-risk limit is, please view the lectures because eventually we're going to be working with at-risk limit in conjunction with the passive activity loss. So I'm, I covered at-risk limit separately. I covered the passive activity loss separately. Then we'll put them together. But you need to understand each one of them separately. So this topic is covered in an income tax course, the CPA exam regulation section, as well as the enrolled agent exam. As always, I would like to remind you, my viewer, that's you, to connect with me on a professional as well as a personal level. If you have a LinkedIn account, please connect with me. If you don't, you should have a LinkedIn account, so open a LinkedIn account. Facebook, please like my Facebook page, and you can connect with me on a personal level. You want to make sure you subscribe to my YouTube. This is where I house all my lectures. You want to make sure you're aware of any new lectures I post. Please like them, share them, put them in playlists, email them to friends. Just let everyone knows about them. Twitter account, this is my Twitter handle, and on my website, you can have access to my all my lectures organized by course and chapter and organized by, yes, course and chapter, so it's easier to browse. This recording is brought to you by Jaeger CPA Review. If you like this recording on Jaeger CPA Review, you can view hundreds of hours of video lectures like mine, thousands of multiple choice questions with detailed solution simulations, textbook, including a physical textbook for the CPA exam, audio lectures for retention purposes, electronic flashcards, plus others. If you happen to use Jaeger, use the code PMF, you will save yourself 10%, especially if you're studying for your CPA or if you're an accounting student, you can supplement your knowledge. So let's talk about the passivity, passive activity loss limit. So this is basically a review. And basically, if you remember that the second layer of defense that the IRS introduced is the three categories of income. And what, what are those three categories? This is a review for us. We said that income can be active, which is salary, wages, profit from business, sale of assets from the business, portfolio, income, interest, dividend, annuities, sale of assets that produce those interest, dividend, and annuities. Passive. Passive, where the taxpayer does not materi materially participate, and we cover what materi materially participate in a 25-minute recording. So what are the overall idea? It's disallowed the deduction of passive losses against portfolio income. So you cannot take those losses, the passive losses. You cannot take losses from here and reduce your portfolio and active income. This is the idea. So any trade or business in any trade or business or income producing activity in which the taxpayer does not participate is basically the passive. Again, we talked about this much, much more in details in another session, subject to certain exceptions. All rental activities, whether the taxpayer materially participate or not, to remember that rental activities are always considered passive and until we talk about the exception, which will be in another session. Now let's talk about the actual rule itself. Again, I'm, you're gonna feel I'm repeating myself, but it doesn't hurt. Limitation on passive losses. Generally speaking, passive losses can only offset passive income. They cannot reduce active or portfolio income. This is what I said on the prior slide. Disallowed losses are suspended and carried forward, okay? Suspended losses must be allocated to specific activities. We'll, we'll talk about this later on, okay? Let's take a look at a simple example to see how this all works. Cindy sells an apartment building with passive activity with an adjusted basis of 500,000 for 580. So she sold the business for 480. The basis for this building is half, half a million. Therefore, we have gains of 80,000. Her total gain is 80,000, but she has suspended losses associated with this building of 60,000. Once you dispose of the asset, so remember, so in the past, in prior year, she was incurring losses from that building. She was incurring losses, and those losses were passive. And what did she do with those losses? She just parked them on the side. Now she sold the building. Once you dispose of the building, you could use those losses. Now her gain on the sale is 20000 Now I just remember something. It's very important. When you get a new client, and I'm talking here about the real world. When you get a new client in the real world, you got to always ask them if they have any passive losses uh, from prior years because they may not be aware of them. Actually, you don't ask them, just ask their prior accountant or CPA just to make sure because they might have losses, 
taxpayers are not aware of this, that they can use disallowed losses. So when you sell the asset, you could use those disallowed losses, just FYI on the side. So those losses were disallowed, they were passive losses. Let's take a look at another example. Roy sells an apartment building, a passive activity with an adjusted basis of 400, 4560. In addition, he has suspended losses of 120,000. Let's go through this. Sold at 4560, basis 400,000, we have a gain of 160. Now this is where the suspended losses gets, in, get, gets into place and they would reduce our gain by 120, therefore our gain is 40,000. In both of these examples that we worked, or in the previous three examples, we had gained. What if we have excess losses? What does that mean? What happens if we sell the asset and the suspended losses exceeds the gain recognized on the sale? So basically, after we sell the asset, we still have losses. In this case, what do we need to do? The excess loss is allowed to offset other income in the following order. First, we see if we have net passive activity income or gain. So first, again, that passive, it's going to reduce our passive income or gain. If not, then we can go into and reduce our active or portfolio income. So eventually, once we dispose of the asset, if any excess loss is left, then guess what? We can use those excess losses against active portfolio of income. But again, we have to dispose of the asset. Let's look at an example. Dean sells an apartment building with a passive activity with adjusted basis of 600, sold it for 650. Sold it for 650, adjusted basis of 600, we have $50,000 gain. In addition, he has, a, he has a current and suspended losses of 60,000 associated with the building and no, longer, and no longer has any other passive activities. Okay, so 50,000 of gain, then we bring in the suspended losses from prior years. Now they gave us $10,000 of suspended losses. And they told us we don't have any other passive activity. Now what happened if we have other passive activity? Well, we're gonna talk about this in a moment. Just give me a moment here. So the $10,000 deductible loss is offset against Dean's active and portfolio income. Now we can take this $10,000 and take it against W2, reduce our interest. Again, when can we do so? When we sold the building, we sold the building, okay? What would be the outcome if Dean sold the building for 590,000? In this case, there would be a loss on the sale of 10,000 and an overall deductible loss of 60,000. This total loss included the suspended the suspended the suspended loss is deductible. So let's assume we sold the building and we incurred a loss on the building itself. Okay? Let's assume we sold the building for 590. So we have $10,000 loss from the sale and $60,000 loss suspended. So we have $70,000 in losses kind of good news for us if we have income from other sources. Okay, so this is the general idea. Let's work a few examples real quick just to make sure we understand this concept. We have Mike, an attorney, earns $200,000 from his law practice and received $45,000 in dividend and interest during the year. In addition, he incurs a loss of $50,000 from an investment and a passive activity acquired three years ago. What is Mike's net income for the current year after considering the passive investment? Well, guess what? You're going to have the 200000 We're going to include the interest and dividend. We're going to include the interest and dividend. And we cannot deduct any, any of these losses because those losses are passive and we did not dispose of the asset. Therefore, we have 245000 See you, John. Acquired an activity several years ago in the, and in the current year, it generated a loss of 50000 Sir John has an AGI of 140 before considering the loss from the activity. If the activity is, is a bakery and Sir John is not material participant, what does that mean? It means Sir John is passive. What is the AGI? I'm sorry, the AGI is 140. That's it. And this 50,000 is suspended. Suspended until we either have income from this activity or dispose of this activity. Lucy sells her partnership interest, a passive activity, with an adjusted basis of 305 for 330. So we have a gain here. We sold it for 330. Our adjusted basis 305. Therefore, we have a gain on the sale of 25,000. In addition, she has current and suspended losses of 28. All right, that's good. Now we're going to introduce the suspended losses. This is when they come in and they help. We end up with $3,000. Of losses now 
and we're going to assume she does not have any other passive activity that, that $3,000 it could reduce active income and it could reduce portfolio income so this is good now what happened if we have multiple activities simply put if we take Lucy here she has 3,000 of losses but Lucy has two three other activities two three other businesses that are passive how do we deal with this in that situation and that's often the case taxpayer often own interest in more than one activity in which case any suspended losses must be allocated among those passive activities that generate losses so if we have losses we're going to take the losses and allocate them spread them how do we allocate them the allocation to an activity is made by multiplying the disallowed passive activity loss from all other activities using the following fraction and here's what we do we'll take the loss from the one passive activity and we'll divide it by the sum of losses for taxable year from all passive activities having losses and the best way to illustrate this obviously is to look at an example so let's take a look at an example diego has investment in three passive activities with the following income and losses for 2017 activity a b and c so notice if we net them out two activities has losses one activity gains overall we have 25 thousand dollar in losses now how do we allocate the twenty five thousand because we need to take this losses and allocate the losses okay because we already canceled the profit what we're left with losses what we do is we'll take the current year losses multiplied by the, the each activity divided by the total losses the total losses is fifty thousand okay so notice here um 30 divided by 50 is 60 percent so 60 percent of the losses it's going to go to activity a which is 15,000 and 40 percent which is 20,000 divided by 50 40 percent goes to activity b therefore we allocate 15,000 to activity a 10,000 to activity b of this 25,000 okay now let's see what's going to happen in future years assume that in 2018 the following year activity a produces ten thousand dollar of income so this is now we are in 2018 a year later and activity a has an income of ten thousand dollar diego may use the ten thousand may use the ten thousand dollar of activity a suspended loss of fifteen thousand from 2017 to offset the ten thousand dollar income from this activity so basically what's going to happen remember we have fifteen thousand so we're going to take the fifteen thousand and we're going to only use ten thousand out of it so we're going to bring the income from activity a down to zero and we still have five thousand dollar in losses okay if diego sells a in early 2019 the remaining five thousand suspended losses is used to offset any income from the activity reported by diego in 2019 and to determine his final gain or loss so this five thousand if we sold activity a what's going to happen is it's either going to go to activity b assuming we don't have we no longer have activity b it's going to go ahead and the and be used to deduct uh, to reduce our active and portfolio income okay so notice activity losses you cannot use them now i'm sorry uh, passive losses you cannot use them now but you can use them later uh, so proper proper planning is crucial for uh, passive activity losses okay let's take a look at another example sarah has an investment in four passive activity partnership um, um purchased several years ago last year the income and the losses were as follow a b c and d first thing is net them out plus 30 minus 30 will cancel each other out minus 15 minus 10 so we have overall losses of 20,000 okay between all four now what do we need to do we need to take the losses and allocate the losses for the other three activities four uh b c and d the losses are 20 the losses are also 50,000 okay so what's going to happen for b whoops for b we're going to take uh 30,000 divided by 50,000 which is the ratio and that's again that's 60 percent and we multiply this by 20,000 for activity c it's 15,000 divided by 50 15,000 divided by 50,000 multiplied by 20,000 and for D we have 5,000 divided by 50,000 times 20,000 so I know this is 10 percent 10 percent multiplied by <coughs> sorry 5,000 divided by 50 sorry this is not okay let me just let me just 
write better here because the pen is not serving me right always blame the pen <laughs> all right let's go back here um, 5,000 divided by 50,000 multiplied by $20,000 in losses all right so now 30,000 uh, multiplied by you know 60 percent which is 60 percent multiplied by 20,000 should be 12,000 and 10 percent multiplied by 2,000 20,000 is 2,000 so I'm assuming this is 6,000 okay if this is 12 and this is 2 what's left must be this must be 6,000 so this is how we allocate the losses between all three okay and the current year she sold the interest and in activity D for 10,000 so we sold D for 10,000 gain activity D which would ha which had been profitable in the last year had a current loss of 1500 how will sale of activity D affect Sarah's taxable income so activity D we sold it at a gain so we have to include the gain then the losses that was suspended from last year would reduce that gain then the losses from operating would reduce the gain as well so overall when we sold D we have a taxable gain of six thousand five hundred six thousand five hundred okay another thing we want to talk about is passive credits um, we have passive losses but we also have passive credits we did not talk about credits yet but credits are um, uh, are basically credits uh, that reduce your taxable income dollar for dollar so basically if you have a tax bill and you happen to have a business tax credit of any sorts like because of energy uh you could have many many different bus uh, general business credit energy type of business credit uh, i mean disabled access credit small employer pension startup credit businesses could have all sorts of credit work opportunity tax credit whatever credit you have what happened if they are related to your passive activity? That's 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 the question. So those are passive credits. We'll talk about the credits later. Okay, credit from passive activities are subject to loss limitation. So here's how we're going to use them. Utilize passive activity credit to the extent of regular tax attributable to passive income. What does that mean? It means if you have any credits, credits reduce your taxes, but you could also reduce the taxes that are attributable. To passive income so you would reduce the credit that had the credit will be used so the credit from the passive activity will be used to reduce the taxes for that passive activity okay so credit this allowed are suspended and carried forward similar to losses so if you don't have taxes but you have credit you can carry those credit for future for future years similar to the losses however if you sell the business those credits are lost versus the suspended losses you could use the suspended losses suspended credit can be used to offset taxes from the disposition of activity but any credit left after activity is disposed of are permanently lost okay so if you if you sell the activity that's it and you still have credits you can no longer use them okay so they can be used to offset tax from this position but if you have anything left you cannot use them versus losses if you have any losses left after you sell the asset then you could still use the losses so Sam owes fifty thousand dollar disregarding net 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 passive activity income and eighty thousand of of taxes considering both net passive activity and other taxable income disregarding the credit in both cases simply put if you have eighty thousand with with the passive activity and fifty thousand without the passive activity it means your passive activity income is thirty thousand okay the amount of tax attributable to the passive activity is thirty thousand simply put as long as you have credits up to 30,000, you could reduce your taxable income. Okay, so under the circumstances, the $30,000 of passive activity credit can be used. So as long as you have up to 30,000, you can use them. Let's look at a different scenario. Alicia sells a passive activity for a gain of 10,000. The activity has suspended losses of 40,000 and suspended, suspended credits of 10,000. Okay, so here we go. So we sold it at a gain, but we have plenty of losses and plenty of credit. The gain is offset by the $10,000 of suspended losses. So we sold it at a gain. Now of this 30,000, we can only use 10. So the 10,000 would reduce the gain down to zero. And once we use the 10,000, we still have 30,000 that we can use either against other activities or against active income in portfolio. But what's gonna happen to the 15,000 of suspended credit sorry 
it's done. It's permanently lost. You can no longer use that 10,000. Okay, let's change the scenario a little bit. Let's assume she had a realized gain of 100,000. Well, that's good. Uh, of the past, uh, realized gain of 10,000 on the sale of the passive activity, the suspended credit could have been used to the extent of regular tax related to the net passive activity income. So simply put, we're going to take the gain minus the suspended losses. We're left with 60,000. If the tax related to the taxable gain of 60,000 is 15,000, or more than the entire 15,000 of suspended credit can be used. So, so we're going to have to pay taxes on the 60,000. Whatever taxes we pay, we, we still have 15,000 credits. So let's assume taxes just for the sake of illustration. Let's assume we have to pay 20% taxes on this. 20%, that's um, 2,000 times 6, we have to pay 12,000. Guess what? If that's the case, we don't have to pay anything. We're going to use the 15,000. Actually, we don't have to use the whole thing. We're going to have 3,000 unused. Let's assume the taxes were 30%. If the taxes were 30%, then our tax bill is 18,000. Now, now we could use the full 15,000. Okay, and we still have to pay 3,000 in taxes. It means we use, we use the whole thing. Okay, so notice if it's 20% and our tax bill is 12,000, we would basically lost $3,000 of, of, uh, of tax credit. Okay, passive activity changes to active. So basically, we have a passive activity and then we change the status because now we are materially participating in this business. Okay, what would happen if a formally, if a formally passive activity becomes an active one? Suspended losses are allowed to the extent of income from the now active business. So now we can deduct them. Any remaining suspended losses continue to be treated as a loss from the passive activity, can be deducted from passive income, or can be carried over to the next year and be deducted to the extent of income from the now active business in the succeeding year. So if you have passive losses, and now that business that you know that it used to be passive losses because you did not materially participated and now it became active then you can take that passive losses and start to deduct them against the now active business okay and if you have anything left you can carry them for future years for several years rebecca has has owned an interest in a passive activity that has produced losses of eighty thousand. during that period she did not have passive activity income from other sources she, she could not deduct any of the passive activity losses. She was, she's sitting on $80,000 of passive activity losses. In the current year, what she did, Rebecca decided to be active in that business, to become materi materially participant in the activity. Okay, so the passive activity is now active one and her share of, of the business profit totaled 25,000. And now the share of the profit from that business is 25,000. Is she gonna pay any taxes? Absolutely not, why? Because she has plenty of losses from prior years, now she can deduct, she can only deduct 25, make it zero, and she would still have, and she would still have 55,000 for future years, which is carried to future years and be offset to offset other income, uh, offset income from the formerly passive activity or income from other passive activity. So the 55,000 will be used for the future, either, either when she, generate more income from this activity, or if she happens to have another passive activity, she participate in another passive activity. And who's subject to the taxpayer, uh, who's subject to the passive, passive loss limits? Okay, individuals, state, trust, personal service corporation, closely held corporations, okay? But closely held corporation, they can deduct passive losses against active income. So there's like a special rule here that you just need to be aware of. Um, S corporation and partnership passive loss pass passive losses flow through to owners and limits are applied at the owner level. Don't worry about S corporation and partnership. We're going to have plenty of lectures to deal with this later on. I just wanted to give you a taste, just in case in your class you are covering. Okay, let's take a look at this example. In the current year, White Inc. earns four hundred thousand from up operations and receives thirty six thousand dollars in interest from various portfolio investment. White also pays 150,000 to acquire 20% interest in a passive activity that produced $200,000 in losses. Assuming that White Inc. is a personal service corporation, how will these transactions affect its taxable income? Um, what is personal service corporation? It's it's the performance, uh, it's the principal activity is the performance of personal services. 
and that activity is 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 performed by who by the employee owners so simply put think about accountant if you're an accountant well you are doing the work okay you are it's like a personal service corporation because your personal skills is required to conduct the business so you're an owner slash employee those are personal service companies now the passive passive loss limit applies here so what does that mean it means you have four hundred thousand in income plus 36 in interest that's 436 you cannot deduct the 20 percent you cannot deduct 20 percent which is you cannot deduct any of the forty thousand dollar losses they're suspended same as part a except that white is closely held but not personal service company now it's 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 a corporation well as we said you can deduct passive losses against passive income so therefore you have four hundred thousand of income then you can deduct that forty thousand against active income then you have to add the portfolio income of thirty six thousand so that's what that's uh three basically three sixty plus 36 equal to 396 so for the closely held corporation you can take some of that losses and use them up if you have any questions about this topic and again i kept this topic separately from the at risk limit because because it gets a little bit complicated involved once you have both of them together so make sure you understand how this works before we proceed any further and remember we have an exception to talk about and that's rental real estate there's an exception to this passive activity loss rule i will keep it separate this way i don't i don't add too much into one specific recording if you're studying for your cpa study hard if you're a college student make sure you study hard if you need additional lectures go to my website i have taxes intermediate accounting auditing all courses if you happen to visit please consider donating